Listener's Choice with Clemens Monyatella. On our Listener's Choice feature this morning, we are talking about egg and sperm donation and how that process works in South Africa. There are people who want to have kids, people who wish to be parents, but they struggle with fertility or for other reasons are unable to conceive naturally. Um, hence, it's a gift of a healthy egg or a good sperm that can be life changing, a life changing opportunity in their life. So I want us to look at how that process, what that process entails. Um, look at who qualifies, for instance, to be a sperm or egg donor and what is the cost factor for egg and sperm donation, uh, for both the donor and the person who will receive the donation. Can a donor be paid for their ovaries, their sperm? Or are they simply compensated for their time and also the cost that they've incurred uh, during that donation? I want you to share your experiences with us. So if you have ever donated your eggs, you've donated your spam, uh, let us know how that process has been, right? Or maybe you have used the services of um, a spam donor, of an egg donor. Um, how was that experience for you? Or are you perhaps right now looking to donate your spam or your egg or looking to, in fact, get a donation of a sperm or an egg. Is that something you're considering? Uh, give us a call. Send us a WhatsApp voice note as well. Uh, Dr. Yossi Unterslag is a fertility gynecologist at Vita Lab Fertility Clinic. He's going to guide us through this conversation. Thank you so much for making time for us, Dr. Uh, Unterslag. Good morning. Good morning, Clement. Thank you. And please call me Yossi. It's much easier. Yossi, all right. <laughs> so, l- let's start with who can donate or, or maybe let me start here do we have egg and spam uh, clinics across the country or is it difficult to find um, um, a lot of the how prevalent are those in the country so there are quite a few um, sperm banks we've got in Gauteng, they are in Cape Town um, so there are quite a few sperm banks in South Africa and there are a lot of egg donor agencies in South Africa and a lot of infertility or fertility clinics which have their own in-house egg banks. So um, it is uh, quite an accessible treatment in South Africa. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, only accessible in private, but um, it, is, it is accessible across the country. Okay, so how does this process of egg and sperm donation work? Maybe we can start from a perspective of the donor. Uh, what, is ex- it is, what is it expected from them? What are the limitations about what they can or what they cannot do when it comes to this donation? How does that process work? Sure. So um, we are very lucky in South Africa. We've got pretty robust laws that that govern um, egg and sperm donation. So there's um, the National Health Act, which um, gives us all the law related to egg and sperm donation. So currently the criteria to be able to donate eggs or sperm is that a person must be over the age of 18. They must be able to understand what they're doing. They must be seen by a psychologist and screened and be found to be psychologically um, uh, you know, on, uh, okay to donate the eggs, that they understand what they're doing. And then in South Africa, we're allowed to do both open donation and anonymous donation. So either a couple can bring somebody that they would like to use as their donor, either for sperm or eggs, or they can use um, the anonymous egg or sperm banks in South Africa. Um, so donors need to be at least 18. They need to understand what they're doing, be seen by a psychologist. They need to pass um, a whole lot of different health screening. They need to pass um, blood tests where we screen them for sexually transmitted diseases. They need to be screened either for their sperm or for their eggs to see what their sperm quality is like or what their egg numbers are like in their ovaries. Certain clinics will have certain age restrictions, so they won't allow donors over a certain age to donate because as we age as humans, our fertility reduces and we want the recipient's outcomes to improve with the donor egg or sperm and not to, not to worsen. So those are basically the main, the main um, um, screening tools. And then, mm-hmm. you know, certain clinics will also have screening based on body mass index and highest level of education. Um, and that really is just to, to um, create profiles that are more attractive to, mm-hmm. to the recipient couples. Okay. And as someone who's donating um, sperm or somebody donating their egg, are they allowed to know who that egg or that sperm is going to be donated to? 
So, so it is a possibility, but if you donate anonymously through the anonymous process through a bank, then they are not allowed to know where the, the sperm and the eggs go. So that's part of the regulations that, um, it has to remain completely anonymous. It's the responsibility of the clinic that does the artificial fertilization to protect the anonymity of the donors. Um, and it's probably one of the reasons why we have donors available in South Africa where we have an anonymous option and um, it's not a forced open donation process like some countries insist on. Okay. And do, do, do they get compensated when you're donating your egg or your, or your spam? So, yeah, the law in South Africa is that we're not allowed to buy and sell human tissue. So sperm and eggs are considered as such human tissue. And so we're not allowed to pay per se for eggs or sperm. And um, I think you mentioned in the intro, donors are allowed to be compensated for the expenses incurred. So the compensation varies um, depending on how much time the, the donor will have to take off work, what kind of travel will be required. Um, and it is governed as well by the, by the regulations. So there is a maximum amount of money that can be um, handed over to the donor as compensation, but it sometimes can be less depending on on the circumstances. And again, this is something that's given offered to the donors as compensation. And in some cases where we, we see couples who use open donation, their donors don't want any compensation for the donation of their, their gametes, which is either sperm or eggs. Oh, okay. How many times can one donate their sperm and even even their egg? Is there a limitation in terms of our regulations? That's an excellent question, and there is. So the regulations limit the not the number of donations, but the number of live-born children per donor, and that's capped at 12. And the reason for that is the more times a donor donates and the more live births that they have, the higher the risk is of two genetic siblings potentially one day meeting each other and marrying um, and, and, and what could result from that. So the, the, the number... 12 is capped at that level based on our population in South Africa and different countries have different limitations. And as a recipient couple have a live born child, they are instructed by law to notify the clinic. The clinic is instructed by law to register the live birth on a, on a central database, which mm-hmm. we all access, so that as soon as the donors reach their live birth limit of 12, they are no longer allowed to donate. And even if they have sperm or eggs frozen at a bank, that sperm or eggs have to be discarded. The exception, which is allowed for in the regulations, is when a family would require or would like a sibling from the same donor. So they don't want to have their two children having genetically different parents. Mm-hmm. And if they've had one child and the donor's reached her live birth, we can appeal to have a sibling cycle for that, for that family to allow them to have an extra child um, above the 12 live births. All right, it's 80 minutes after 11 o'clock. Um, have you ever been a recipient of a spam donation, of an egg donation? And how's that experience been for you? Or maybe you have been the donor. Maybe you've donate, donated your spam. You've donated your eggs. Uh, please share your experiences with us on 011-883-0702. Maybe you've got questions. The WhatsApp line is 72 Burning questions. Insightful answers. Listener's choice. With Clemens Magnatella. 21 minutes after 11 o'clock. Egg and spam donation is what we're discussing on our Listener's Choice feature this morning with Dr. Yossi uh, Unterslag, who's a fertility gynecologist at Vitalab uh, Fertility Clinic. Do you have questions around egg and spam donation? Have you ever been a recipient? Um, have you ever been a donor? What has that experience been for you? 011-883-0702. Maybe you've got questions around uh, how this works because maybe you're considering being a recipient or being a donor. Uh, you can also call us on 011-883-0702. Candice, you're calling from Johannesburg. Good morning. Hi, Clement. How are you? I'm all right. Go ahead. Just wanted to say a huge thank you to Dr. Yassi. He will probably, will hopefully remember myself and my husband, Chris, we went to see him at the end of 2022, mm. very disheartened. I'd had several messages I was pregnant. And nobody could give us answers. We did explore sperm and egg donation, but he said to us in the first appointment, look, let's just go back to basics and figure out what's going on here. And Clement, within that appointment, we had answers. Within a month, we knew what was going on. 
within two months, I was pregnant, and I now have a healthy four month old baby girl. So yeah. He is an absolute miracle worker, and I just want to encourage anybody that is struggling with infertility, considering this, go see him, yeah. get him to really explain why these things happen, and just know that there are lots of options out there for you. Oh, wonderful. Candice, thank you so much for, for calling and for that feedback for Dr. Unterslag. Um, it, well, Yossi, as you, <laughs> as you said, I must call you. That's some great feedback there. Do, do you find that some people go towards approaching egg or sperm donation as an option before actually trying out other options that are available? Yeah, look, I mean, unfortunately, we do see patients who've, who've been um, recommended to go with the, the spare, sperm or egg donation route. And, um, and we do see patients that we see and say, look, maybe we can try a different approach, still using your own sperm or eggs. And, um, you know, thankfully, we do, we do have success stories. But there are, unfortunately, situations where there are no options. You know, if we see a woman in menopause, um, who really wants to be a mom or we see a man who's got a condition called azospermia where, um, you know, the sperm production in the testicles is just not there, then, then unfortunately those couples only have one option, which is um, to go the sperm or egg donation route. But, but we, we certainly will exhaust all of the avenues possible before we, before we go that route. Unfortunately, sometimes it is a financial decision. If the prognosis is just so poor with one's own eggs or sperm and the prognosis is good with donors, sperm or eggs and couples do make that decision to go that route um, for you know the shortest easiest route to to a pregnancy um, often they'll come and see us where they've been down the road for a long time and have tried many cycles and they you know they they just kind of emotionally and financially just spent and they will go the route of donor eggs or sperm so that they, they they achieve their dream of becoming parents and and we you know we only have amazing amazing feedback from our parents who have gone that route um, I, 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 when I sat yesterday and got the call from you guys to do the show today I was sitting with a young woman who saw me at 36 in premature menopause and unfortunately only had one option which was donor egg uh, conception and she was sitting showing me pictures of her beautiful son um, telling me about how much he looks and behaves like her so so really it is it is a rewarding um, uh, journey for those who do have to go that route Mm, yeah, uh, let, let's go to some more questions on 0727021702. Someone is asking about anonymity. anonymity. Uh, please, can you ask the doctor today why is anonymity such a big factor in egg and sperm donation? So you know, the the the, the young men or women who come forward and um, offer to donate their eggs or sperm, uh, they they doing this very much from an altruistic point of view they they're not getting compensated uh, a huge amount that they're doing this for the money and um they they do it because they want to be able to help but they don't want to one day have a knock on their door where four or five children say you know you you are our father or our mother um, and that responsibility is is huge for a young man or woman to have to take on um so so the anonymity protects them against that and they are still able to, to you know to do what to them is a really incredible deed without that fear that you know, one day they will meet a child who, who, you know, asks some questions, why did you, you know, donate your eggs or sperm and things like that. So, so it's important, very important for the, for the donors, primarily the, the anonymity. Um, but, but the recipients also like to have that as well. Um, we, we do very little known donation in South Africa, primarily anonymous donation. Mm-hmm. Let's go to Jobek now. Danielle, good morning. Danielle, good morning. Hi there, Clement. Hi, Dr. Yossi. Um, hi. So I just phoned in because I have been the recipient of donor sperm. Mm-hmm. And then after that, donor egg and donor sperm. Um, and I just have so much that I could say about it. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't know if you have any questions for me as a recipient. Please, uh, for, so first of all, you said you were a recipient of a... Um, a sperm donation first before you were a recipient of egg and sperm? Correct. Okay. So did you carry the, the first child yourself after the, the sperm donation? Yes. So I was 37 with my first pregnancy mm. um, and I'm in a same-sex relationship. Mm-hmm. I'm married to my wife. Mm. 
So um, we were going to go with a known donor, and it didn't work out. But we were strongly advised even before that that it could become complicated legally. Mm. That that donor, that person that was helping us, would have rights to the child, which seemed fine at the time because we were very good friends. Yeah. Um, but it is something to really consider if you're going to use a donor that you know. Okay. Um, yeah. And then we went for sperm donation, mm. and we felt pregnant with a little girl who's now 13. And then we weren't going to have another one and suddenly the maternal incident kicked in again. And um, I was now in my early 40s and it became very difficult to fall pregnant. I did 13 cycles of artificial insemination and then one IVF, which yeah. yielded what looked like five great eggs, but none of them took. Um, and yeah, and so we tried the donor mm. um, egg route and... Honestly, the first, um, the first time we tried, we put two eggs in and, and one egg took, and I have a five-year-old now. Oh, oh and just, yeah. Yeah, and I just wanted to say to anybody that is really battling, mm. this is an incredible option. The people that donate, they give you a piece of their life to you. My life would not be the same without these two children. And if you're worrying about, you know, whether you would be able to bond with a donor egg, your body knows what to do with that egg. Mm. Once it's in your body, it's growing, you are contributing. And even though the genetic blueprint is there for that child, there is, and Dr. Yossi can talk about this, there is an epigenetic side to it where you are, could be switching on and off genes and the environment also plays a huge role mm. um, once that child is born. And what I wanted to just say lastly is for me personally, these are my kids and if and if all those other um, attempts had worked, I wouldn't have the two beautiful kids that I have today. And these are my kids and none other were supposed to be. And I just have all the, the gratitude in the world for people who oh. donate. Oh, Danielle. Thank you for calling us. What, what a, what what a, a beautiful call. story. What a great call. Yeah, Dr. Yossi, reflections on that? Yeah, so firstly, just a huge thank you to Daniel for, for sharing her story because I know that there's so many people out there who, who just need that, um, that reassurance from, from parents who've gone down that route. And, uh, I mean, such a great call will we'll give those parents that reassurance that, you know, they're going to have a child of their own that they're going to love just the same, irrespective of where the DNA comes from. And uh, I think Danielle also made an excellent point about the anonymous versus known donation. And it's something I talk to my patients about a lot. When you use a known donor who's in your circles, it certainly will make things uncomfortable when you are in public and they're there and the child is there. And, you know, it, it certainly does put a strain on, 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 on relationships. And so... The, the anonymous route takes that away and I think that's an excellent point as well and just such a great story and such a great outcome. Mm. Oh, Dr. Yossi, um, Unter Slack, you've been great. Thank you so much for, for, for joining us for, for this chat. He's a fertility gynecologist at Vitalab Fertility Clinic.